Tailbone. Reginald, what am I going to do about you? You're better on that horn of yours than anyone we've ever had. But when it comes to reading... Mr. Peacom, music on paper don't mean nothing to me. Well, I'm afraid you're wasting your time here. You mustn't feel ashamed, Reggie. I ain't exactly ashamed. It's just thinking how I was gonna tell my mammy Ella. She wants me to be a teacher. Well, would you like me to break the news to her kind of gentle like? Nobody breaks no news to my mammy gently like. I'll tell her myself, slow and easy. Hello, Ella. Hello. Nothing today? Nothing. I say there, is this the home of Mr. Latimer, the architect? Sure is, sir. Is he in? He is and he ain't. Is you a bill collector? <laughs> no, I'm just an old friend from Chicago. He's in. Sorry, Mr. George, you got some foreigners from Chicago. Be with you in a second, Ella. Beautiful, my dear. Now, if you'll excuse me. You are excused. Hello, well, George. Steve Porter, how are you? I'm certainly <laughs> glad to see you. Hello, Paul. You certainly have grown. Why, I remember when you couldn't even walk. Well, Steve, how's Chicago? What are you doing in New Orleans? Staying for dinner, of course. Thanks, George. We'd like to. Darling, this is my friend, Mr. Porter, his son, Paul. And this is my daughter, Kit. How do you do, sir? How do you do, Paul? How do you do? Do you play the piano? Uh-huh. Would you like to hear me play some real New Orleans music? I don't mind. It's very nice. I like it. You like that? Very much. Well, come with me. I'll show you something much better. I've been working on some new ideas. You stay here, Paul. Uh, the, uh, don't you like music? Just want to know. It is not. I've got some sherry down. Mr. Here. George, can I see you a moment? Yes, Ella. Excuse me. Certainly. Well, what is it, what is it, what is it? Mr. George, is I to understand we're going to have guests tonight? That's right, Ella. What would you like for dinner? Surprise me. I'll surprise you right now. Mr. Jack says he won't let us charge no more groceries. Ella, from this moment on, I forbid you to patronize Mr. Jack's establishment. Go somewhere else and open a charge account. Word gets around awful fast in this year town. Then pay cash. That's the whole idea I've been trying to convey to you. That's what I call real southern hospitality. You serve a marvelous dinner, and your neighbors supply the music. It's wonderful. Oh, those European waltzes, I don't care for them. Kit, how about some real New Orleans music? I'd love to. Come on, Paul. No, I don't want to hear any New Orleans music. Paul! <laughs> Steve, let's have a cognac. Thanks, I'd love it. Well, George, what about coming to Chicago? Chicago? What would I do in Chicago? Big pockets. <laughs> well, you could start off by building a house for me. Yes, and then what? And then, you know, as the head of one of Chicago's biggest investment firms, I could help you a great deal. Thanks, Steve. I like it here. You'd like it in Chicago, too. Let me show you something. There's New Orleans, reckless daughter of the Mississippi. 
By day, she looks no different than other towns. At night, she suddenly springs to life. It's a rough, old, charming town. And she's been battered and bruised, praised and damned by the scum of the land and the flower of the earth. Her streets have been sprinkled with the blood of saints and sinners. Every night, she dies like an old man, only to be born each morning a husky, laughing baby, built on mud, sand and mud. But beneath it all, she's got a foundation that's solid and strong enough to build up to the stars, a heart that beats with life. That's very nice for poets, but not very profitable for you of business. <laughs> ah! <laughs> business, business, business. <laughs> Steve? My family hasn't been tainted by a businessman since Louis Napoleon. If you don't care for yourself, George, that's quite all right. But you should think of Kit. Kit? She has no mother. Excuse me, Mr. George. Anything else for a good church? No, Ella. Uh, by the way, how is the Reverend getting along with his collections? Fine, Mr. George. I designed a little church for these people. And you'll wait for the collections? Yes, and tonight we's calling on the Lord to come down and loosen some of them tight pockets. And the Lord gonna do it, too. Yes, sir, tonight's the night. Me and the Reverend and the Lord got a little scheme and we're gonna bust them in Flint wide open. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm gonna practice to this here old horn and blow them stars right out of the sky. When you get ready to pop them stars out, Reggie, get that fair one for me. <laughs> She's got a mighty mean, bad, luck gleaming eye. But I'll get it for you, no matter how long it takes. Reggie. I'll get it. Come along. Where are you going, Ella? I'm gonna put religion in some of these heathens. Where are you going with that ladder, Reggie? Shh, that's the secret. Come on, we'll follow. That King Jeffers, when he ought to be here playing Angel Gabriel, he's possibly down in some low dive playing that horn of his and tempting Satan. Here's your words, Reverend. I figured that sinner might go astray, so I brought my Reggie to blow his horn. Blowing a horn like Gable ain't no easy job for a little boy. Hurry up and blow your horn, Reggie. Now, children, for that special messenger, we is waiting. Yes. 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 I gotta find my mouthpiece. We is waiting! Come right through the roof, Angel. I'll pay for the damage. Jefferson. King Jeffers, boy. King Jeffers. Yes, sir. King Jeffers, sir. How'd you like to play in my band? You mean play with you at the Mississippi Cafe? That's just what I mean, boy. I'm with you, King.
you taking him? Home. I don't want no son of mine playing in a place like this. And why not? I want him to study music like the white folks do. Listen, Ella. Reggie got something that no teacher can give no one, no how. Every once in a great while, the Lord takes a tiny little spark and drops it inside of someone. That spark can be snuffed out. One, two, three. But if you leave it alone, it can grow into a great big ball of fire. Just a burning so bright, just a giving off such big heat that after the man die, folks can still sit around that fire and keep warm. Let Reggie be with me, and I'll watch over that spark of his. All right, King Jeffers, if you say so, I'll leave him with you. No, no. We'll come back someday, Kit, you and I. This isn't goodbye to New Orleans. We're just going on a little trip. Now, it's time to go to sleep. No. The street lamp is still burning. I always wait for it to go out. Old Ned must be late again. Maybe he's tired. He has so many lamps to put out. The dog follows him around. Whenever he puts out a light, the dog barks like it's afraid of the dark. I'm afraid of the dark, too. Now you're going to sleep. Good night, dear. Now, don't go to sleep with tears in your eyes. I don't want to go to Chicago, Ella. Oh, brighten up, child. Don't fret just because we's going away. Soon as we get up north, your daddy going to make yourself plenty of money, and we're going to ride that boat back home again. Now, say your prayers. feel sorry that we left Reggie behind, we can still send for him when we get to Chicago. Oh, no, Mr. George. You see, Reggie's got a spark, and King Jeff will say he'd lose it if he leave New Orleans. Well, we mustn't let that happen.
How's my birthday, child? Glad to see you smile again. Do you like my new record? Sounds like you are. It is. Paul gave it to me. That's what they dance to now in the South. New Orleans. Oh, we should never have left there. Paul, did you reserve our table? Yes, I did, Dad. Thanks. Here they come. Good at last. Kit, you look lovely. <laughs> Steve, George. Here's to, uh, to... I knew it just a minute ago. I said it a hundred times this morning at noon, and now it's all gone. Yes, sir. Happy, happy birthday. birthday, kid. Happy birthday, kid. Many happy turns, darling, and all that. Make a wish, honey. Ella! Don't. Ella, stop it. Oh, please, Ella, don't. <laughs> oh, child, the day you was a big gal. I'm you still innocent. your little girl, Ella. <laughs> oh, you innocent. Here, Kit, from Porter and Son. Thanks, Mr. Porter and Son. I admit it's more or less of a bribe because you know I've we... I've already told her about our business engagement for tonight. Well, then let's go, Paul. Can't we take Kit along? Now, you know a nightclub is no place for a young girl, Paul. Good night, dear. Dad, do you really need me? Paul, I want you to meet the Huggins brothers. It's an important contact. But it's Kit's birthday. Business before pleasure, my boy. I'm sorry to break up your party, my dear. Business before pleasure. Good night, dear. Can't you stay? I won't be late. Paul? Oh, those Huggins brothers. Whenever they come in, they expect to be dragged through every nightclub in town. It's what you get for being a businessman. I refuse to be called a businessman. I'm the new efficiency expert of Porter Incorporated. I hope it's as important as it sounds. It is. Mr. Paul, your father says he's waiting for you. Goodbye. Paul, if you stay, I'll play you some real nice New Orleans music. Downstairs. Only worry for a few troubles for my rest. All I have is this ring. I'm not a thief. What do you want? Just wanted to see your face. Why? Why? Can I go now? Sure. Thank you. Forget it. Where to, lady? I, I was just walking. Babes who walk the street at night usually have a place they call home. I have a home? A beautiful home. Come along, then. I'll take you there. But, but really, I was Let just... Let her go, Murph. She's my girl. Oh, it's you, huh? Yes, it's me. Come on. Just a minute. Peter, will you, Murph? Can't you see we're in love? She lives in a beautiful home with Persian rugs and satin drapes. That's true. That's all true. Birds of a feather, huh? <laughs> Poor Murph. He's lost all faith in fairy tales. Where can I find a taxi? I'll show you. 
Do you live around here? Mm-hmm. Over there where I was sitting when you passed. Do you always scare people who pass by your house? Not much else to do. Don't you work? Only on Saturday nights. What do you do? I'm a trumpet player. In a band? Mm-hmm. A high school band. After graduation, we couldn't get jobs, so we figured we might as well stick together and try and pick up a few bucks on Saturday nights. You know, dances and stuff. I play piano. Where do you work? I don't. Tough, huh? <laughs> what do you do that for? Well, to pick out the beautiful things. Look. Look. Beautiful. I never thought of that. Where's the music coming from? You like that? Uh-huh. That's Smiley Jackson, a friend of mine. Big vaudeville man. Must be some party. Come on. Can we go there? Got a dime? Sure. You're in. Well, what's the dime for? <laughs> Jackson has to pay his rent. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Jackson, meet Kid Latimer. Mmm, a cutie. How do you do, Mr. Jackson? Oh, my puppy just called me Smiley. <laughs> Move over, sister. I have one of my photos. Just paste it on your mirror. All the girls are doing it. <laughs> Say, cutie, uh, how do you look in tights? <laughs> She's not in show business. Oh, too bad. I got a marvelous spot in my show for a girl in tights. <laughs> how about a little nourish? I wouldn't mind. Yeah, the orange stubers are terrific. Oh, oh. Smiley, you'll get a crick in your neck. It's worth it. You made me love you. I didn't want to do it. I didn't want to do it. You made me want you. And all the time you knew it. I guess you always knew it. You made me all so happy. You made me glad. But there were times, dear, you made me feel so sad. You made me sigh for. I didn't want to tell you. I didn't want to tell you. I want some love. That's true. Yes, I do. Dina, do. That's Chicago. Chicago. It's you and me. Oh, I see flashing that this America is only you and me. Freedom, language, poems, employment are you and me. Past, present, future are you and me. Walt Whitman, isn't it? Yeah. He's my favorite poet, too. What's your whistling, Mr. Jackson? Oh, just a little thing I cooked up in a bathtub this morning. <laughs> I've heard it before. How can you beat that? Ain't it criminal these days the way they steal things before you can get them down on paper? Seems to me I've heard that tune years ago. Well, look, cutie, just between you and me and the lamppost, I picked it up on a Mississippi River boat from a boot black boy. They play it slow in Memphis, they sing it blue in St. Louis. But up here in the Windy City, we just give it the needle and rock it back to life with that old razzmatazz. <laughs> Still New Orleans. I'll show you.
listen to it. Listen. Come on, we have work to do. of the law and order league, it is my duty to press these charges. If this crime, only one among many, you understand, is allowed to go unpunished, then the sanctity of home life in our city is doomed. It was this girl here, and she alone, with her play. Your Honor, I'm a worldly man, but never in all my experience have I seen such savage dancing, such an iniquitous display of brazen vulgarity. I protest, Your Honor. Oh, my Your Honor. Order! Order in the court! Ella Tierbone! Raise your right hand. You solemnly swear to tell the whole truth, not much truth, I hope you got. I do. Your name, please. Ella Tierbone. Where do you work, Ella? I work for Mr. George Latimer. How long have you worked for Mr. Latimer? I can't remember, but it's been a long time, most likely. In addition to your other duties, you were nursemaid for the defendant. Is that true? Yes, sir. I suppose that's what you called it up here. I don't know much about folks in this big city, but back home, New Orleans, nothing like this could happen. I've raised that child, Your Honor, and I ain't never seen nothing wrong in music and in folks being natural. Music comes right from her soul, and there can't be no harm in that. That's all, Ella. Thank you. Just one moment. My good woman, you say you've raised this child. Is that true? Mostly, sir. I suppose that from time to time you taught the defendant music as well as other things. It could be, Your Honor. Street music and songs from around the riverfront. Could be, sir. Your Honor, that is exactly our charge. This is the music of the low places, the iniquitous places. He's the... lying, Judge. He's lying. It's trouble music. That's all it is. Trouble music. When folks has got trouble, they get it off their mind by singing. Singing the songs I hear since before I can remember. If a body's got ears, they can hear it everywhere, even here in Chicago. Folks got to help it, Judge. They just got to help it. That's all, Ella. Thomas Jones. Raise your right hand. You solemnly swear to tell the whole truth, not but the truth, help you God. I do. Uh, Mr. Jones, uh, you are what might be called an average citizen. Is that true? Yes, sir. -y. <laughs> That's good enough for me. Mr. Jones, will you tell the court in your own words a little about yourself? Well, my name's Tom Jones, uh, baptized Thomas. I belong to the Methodist Church, third degree Mason, Woodman of the World. I'm an Elk, a Moose, and a Maccabee. I voted for Woodrow Wilson, yes, sir, re. But I don't believe in votes for women. Who's going to do the cooking? Mr. Jones, you were in the apartment at the time the defendant was playing a piano. Is that true? Yes, sir, I was. Mr. Jones, will you tell the jury in your own words what you think of the music the defendant is charged with playing? It sends me, brothers. It sends me. <laughs> no questions. Your Honor, the defense would like to recall the defendant to the stand. Can you explain to the jury just what kind of music technically you were playing? I don't know what to call it technically, but, but I can play it for you. May I ask the court's permission to have the defendant play for the jury? Objection. Overruled. Permission granted. Listen, Joe, we have no piano. Quit calling me Joe. We brought one ourselves, Your Honor. It's right outside. Will it please the court to hear the defendant play? Very well. We'll adjourn to the hall. I'm sorry, kid. I guess this is all my fault. Oh, I don't blame you. Good luck, kid.
reached a verdict? We have, Your Honor. What is that verdict? Hiya, Colonel. Hiya. I'm not a colonel. What can I do for you, Mr. Jackson? <laughs> what can you do for me? <laughs> oh, that's a good one. General, I'm going to do something for you. I'm the guy with the golden apple tree, and the little miss is going to shake them down for us. Mr. Jackson, I wish you'd come to the point. What do you do that concerns me? Plenty, but this is only the beginning. Do these look like rent receipts? No, sir, Bob. Right here, I got enough contracts to keep the little miss busy for years. Yes, sir. A straight a la carte contract for the little miss. Well, strike while the iron is hot. Sign right here. Mr. Jackson, are you suggesting that my daughter... Suggesting? Goes... Colonel, I'm producing. Why, you might even call me an impresario. Yeah, that's me from now on. <laughs> Dad! Dad, you don't understand. I understand perfectly. Why, with all the publicity of that trial and the way she massages the ivories, we'll be a sensation. You must be insane, man. Do you think I'd let my daughter cheapen herself the way you suggest? Oh, but you got me wrong, Colonel. And I'm not a Colonel. Well, then, look, General, this is a break for the little girl, a, 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 a chance to really play the big time, the, the beginning of a career, the birth of a new star. Money, uh, fame, fortune, money, bright lights, uh, money. You rang Mr. George? Yes, Ella. Mr. Jackson is leaving. Oh. I get it. Well, it don't take a brick house to fall on me. So long, Kitty. Johnny. Oh, the one time you people come clear across town to hear us, we have to sound like six drunken plumbers in a tin shop. Oh, it was good. Wasn't it, Paul? Had a fine rhythm. Oh, I don't know. I've always liked sweet music. This stuff makes me jumpy. Well, that's what it's supposed to do. Johnny, I'm going home. What do you want me to do, carry you? Extra, extra, war with Johnny! Hey. Oh, it's oh, your I'm going to join the army and get some of those big gold medals. I want to be a general. I'll be there, too. What about you, Paul? Oh, 
is that the right box for New Orleans? Yes, sir. I just want to make sure Reggie gets it. Oh, excuse me, Mr. Pulliam. What does that say there? It says we are closing Basin Street tonight. I'm going to lay me down and die. gentlemen here say when that clock strikes midnight, old Basin Street is breathing its last gasp. Oh. That don't mean we're through for good. Oh. <laughs> Mr. Jackson, the big impresario from Chicago is going to take us to play for the folks up there. <laughs> if any of you can get up to Chicago, come see old Rick. Because we're going to blow him down. Now, we're going to play you one more last number. Yes. Right. And we're going to really wrap them up. Cigar and coffee. Hello, Kit. Oh, hello, Johnny. What are you so happy about? It's good to see you still around. I was afraid you'd gone to France. It's where I'd like to be. Only no such luck. Why are you all so eager to leave? It doesn't make sense. I don't like things that make too much sense, kid. People who always add one and one or two. Why can't it be three? Just once. One and one or three. That would be nice. I'm sick of playing the cornet for Uncle Sam. I joined the army to fight, not to blow a horn. What'll I tell my grandchildren? Grandchildren? Why, you aren't even married yet. I will be. What shall I? Well, what do you care? Go ahead, tell me. Well, 
She's about your height, your build, same color hair, same smile. She looks a whole lot like you. Well, it looks like we're closing up for the night. Let's go. So long, Johnny. Someone waiting for you? Uh-huh. I don't see no one. He's waiting. I get it. We'll meet again somewhere. We're one and one of three. Dad. I was up in the Major's office. It's... It's been confirmed. Paul is dead. Come. Let's go out somewhere together. You don't mind if I don't go with you? Good night. Good night. Good night. We'd better go after her, Mr. Latimer. Come on. here all alone. You, you remember Paul, don't you? Sure, I remember Mr. Paul. You were here with him the night before he left for France. How is he? is a promise. Watch me blow a clean out of that sky. Get her, Rex. Someday you'll bring her down. Thanks. Good night. Good night, Miss Kidd. I'm going home with you now, Dad. Ah! I hate to disturb you boys, but the general is waiting to tuck you in. Outside, soldier! Fellas are terrific. I never heard anything like it before. You just ain't been to the right place, boy. Stick around. We don't get warmed up until after midnight. Is that a special kind of cornet you use? 
Mine looks the same, but I can't get anything out of it like that. <laughs> Grab a chair. We'll show you how it's done. You mean I can sit in? You can't learn this music with no book, soldier. Luke, toss him that brand new horn. Gee. Now, just relax and follow me. Give me an A. We'll save some for next time. Oh, that was great, Rex. Can I come again? Sure, anytime you feel like, Johnny. Tonight, tomorrow, anytime. Oh, swell. I don't know if I can make it tonight or tomorrow, but I'll be here. A little thing like a war can't stop me. So long. So long. Hey, what's going on out there? The war is over. Hooray, let me out of here, let me out. Relax, gentlemen, you've got 19 more days. Selling some of your records. Well, I'm afraid we're not that good yet. How was the tour this time? Well, the scenery was wonderful, but the band was a bust. Why? Well, there's no room in the classy spots for a little jazz outfit. They don't go for hot stuff. They want it dished out sweet, like a marshmallow sundae. Well, so what? I don't know. Sometimes I think I'd be better off driving a truck. Then I'd know where my next buck's coming from. What kind of a musician are you? One with a stomach that must be fed. So you're giving up? Not yet. We just took a job at the Club Grandioso. Cordona's joint? No, he's not a bad guy. Whenever a musician gets bumped off in his place, he always gets a first-class funeral.
wonderful, John. You really think so? Oh, swell. Oh, it'll never be like Rex, though. You shouldn't be. You've got a style of your own. Rex is, is New Orleans, Basin Street, and you're Chicago. Oh, you pick up where Basin Street leaves off. turned out the street lamp. I remember my father telling me, when you grow up, you'll find night is a wonderful thing. It is. It's where I found you. I know now what made me afraid of the dark. It was being alone. It's a rotten thing to live alone. I know. I'm not alone anymore. Am I, Johnny? Hey! Hey! I have a whole pocket full of rice. We'll save it. Looks like a tough one. <laughs> when did you first know you loved me, Johnny? When I started to take showers with my clothes on. <laughs> Where are we going on a honeymoon? Anywhere you like. The world is yours. You do what you want with it. I want to put it in my pocket and dance on the moon. <laughs> do you like babies, Johnny? Little ones. <laughs> oh, Johnny. Look. Smiley Jackson presents. Hey, this is a break. Rex! Rex! Miss Kidd. Is that you? Hello, Rex. <laughs> You're not in Jackson's show. No, Miss Kitt. I just dropped in to say goodbye to him. Goodbye? Yeah. We're going to hit that open road. There must be some spot around here where they still like it hot. Where a man don't have to beat his brains out on set routine of music. Where a man can play just what he feels. And don't it say in the good book, seek and ye shall find? Well, we're going to start seeking. We'll miss you, Rex. Yeah, the same here. I guess I better be going, because I got a lot of packing and things to do. Well, drop us a line once in a while. I ain't much on writing, Miss Kidd. But I'll be thinking about you and Mr. Johnny and be wishing you the best of happiness. Well, goodbye, Miss Kidd. Goodbye, Rex. Kidd! Kidd! I've got a job. Smiley fixed it up with Jim Browning for me and my band to be the old-fashioned jazz section of his orchestra. Don't you believe it? Smiley. Smiley, you tell him. Oh, think nothing of it, kids. Old Smiley never forgets a friend. Hey, what's the matter here? Take it easy, will you? Have I missed much? Only the beginning, Colonel, but just wait till you hear this next number. It'll send you out of this world. <laughs>
Where's Johnny? Don't you see him? Well, are you sure he's there? He's there, all right. Like a needle in a haystack. <laughs> going away. No. No. Of course not. It was fun playing with Browning for a few days. Yeah, but a whole year of that and we'd end up in the bug house. <laughs> You're not kidding. Wish Johnny wouldn't go with Browning. Oh, Johnny can take it. He's a glutton for punishment. Here he comes with Jackson. We better get going. See you later, fellas. So, so long. long. Take it easy, Bye, kid. kid. Wow. Good luck, Johnny. Well, why don't you stay? Nah, good luck, Johnny. Nah. Good luck, Johnny. See you. Browning's van all aboard your buses. Keep you waiting long, honey. Well, you fellas got any plans yet? Well, the Grandioso's opening up again. They made us an offer. How much? Enough. You guys are chumps. Instead of coming along with me, you beat your brains out in nickel and dime joints. For what? For fun. So long, Johnny. You still think it's a lot of fuller all, don't you? I still think it's not for you. What's wrong with making a lot of money? Nothing's wrong with that. But... Playing the same notes, night after night. The same music, months at a time. How long do you think you can do that? For this money, forever. You're kidding yourself, Johnny. You'll turn into a mechanical toy. A monkey on a stick. You just give me a little time with Browning and you'll see some changes, me. That's what you think. Good luck, Johnny. Well, what? What am I supposed to do? Serenade on street corners? What are the boys doing? Look, honey, what's the use of arguing? Why don't you come along with me, huh? A lot of the boys are taking their wives. We could be together, you and me. You and me. Remember that this America is only you and me. Past, present, future. Please stay, Johnny. And go back to the joints, nothing doing. We've been happy so far, haven't we? We've had fun because we've done what we wanted to, played the music we liked. But, but it's not going to be that way with Browning. Please stay, Johnny. The kind of jazz we know is dead. You can count me out as a pallbearer. That's the way you feel. That's the way I feel. Hey, Johnny, what's the matter with you? You're holding up the buses. Come on, come on, the photographers are out there. Yeah. Goodbye, kid. What's the matter, cutie? Don't you want to be in the picture? Ready? Right for me. Like a pose, Mr. Browning. Get enough of it, huh? Look, Mr. Browning, if you let me play that brass lick like this, we'll have something terrific. Later, Johnny. Later. Please, Mr. Browning, give me a break. Let me play it my way just once, huh? Later, Johnny. Later. But when? When? I can't take it anymore. You gotta let me play it my way. Later, Johnny, later. But I'm telling you, I can't take it anymore. You can always quit.
Just another jazz band. You're slipping, smiling. Listen. Can't you hear? It's more than just jazz. It's, it's got kind of a swing. It's new. It's too new for me. Listen to that horn. Oh, I get it. Johnny Shoemaker, huh? Give him a break. What for? Smiley never forgets a friend, remember? No, kid. I've known you for ten years and I still can't figure you out. You go and marry a guy, he goes off and leaves you. Disappears. And what do you do? You go out and try and find him a job. Why? What's this corn that player got that I ain't got? Oh, Smiley, listen. You're a chump, you know that, don't you? I know, but he's good and I want you to give him a break. Oh, I must be going soft my old age. All right, I'll send him a wire. I'll squeeze him in that band over at the 46 Club. But he's got a band of his own. He's got a band? I got 20 of them. Johnny's will knock them dead. They don't die so quick in this town. All right, open up, open up. What do you want? House detective. Just let me have a look around the room. Anything wrong? That's what we'll have to find out. I still think there's something funny going on in this room. Well, pleasant dreams. You know, Johnny, I've been thinking. We could all get jobs if we split up. What's the use of trying to stick together any longer? Huh? We split up once before when I went with Browning and got nowhere fast. And where are we going now? Well, we recorded some numbers. Yeah, for the agents to shelf. Mm. What's the matter, Herbert? You got a bellyache? She's saying his prayers. Well, pray for me, too. Pray for yourself. If the Lord hears me, he's going to have his hands full. The house to cram! Mr. Schumacher? Uh-huh. Is it collect? No, sir. Thank you, boy. Yippee! Hey, fellas! Listen to this. Have spot in Star Room, New York City. Hit Buffalo first for one week at Club 11. Pay scale, no extras, wire if interested. Interstate Orchestras Incorporated. <laughs> Mr. Mario, I was just thinking about you. Say, uh, how about a little more dough for Johnny Shoemaker? More dough? Are you crazy? 
Don't you know what happened in Buffalo? He didn't tell me anything. You know he isn't here, but I expect him any minute. Why didn't you write? Well, the night I left, you called me a monkey in Eddie's cafe. It made me sore. When I found out you were right, I really got mad. I ditched the band, wound up in Frisco. For a while, I thought I'd never come back. Well, what was the use in writing? What did make you come back? Lots of things. I saw guys who were a lot worse off than me. Guys who were beat down, slapped around, coming from no place, going nowhere. Yet, every night, somewhere along the road, they'd stop and come to life. They hadn't forgotten how to laugh. They could still sing music made up by guys in a jam. Songs about broken lives and busted dreams. I was like crazy when I heard it. It made me see what brings people together. They want to get rid of their troubles. Talk them, sing them, or dance them away. Well, 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 the prodigal son. Hiya, Smiley. Uh, did you uh, tell the missus you were a flop in Buffalo? Flop? That's right. Well, what happened? What went wrong? Nothing. They just couldn't dance to our music is all. What's the matter? Shoes nailed to the floor? No, it was a large barn-like affair, and the people tried to waltz. Oh, you and... can't waltz to this music. Why not? Why not? Well, it's just different. It has to be danced differently. How, on the ceiling? No, we'll show you. What's keeping Johnny so long? They're listening to our record. Boy, get a load of those drums. Eight more payments and they're all mine. When we get in the star room, the first thing I buy is a root toot soup with an R8 fleet. Well, I'm gonna find me a babe with a million bucks and I'm gonna marry her for love. That reminds me, I better send my wife some dough or she'll be going back to her mother. Say, I think I'll write a letter to my mother and ask her if she'll take me back. <laughs> this is the last half. What happens in the beginning? Someone gets murdered. Okay, okay, I get it, and I like it. <laughs> you see? Now all we gotta do is find a place to do it in. What do you mean? Mario canceled the engagement at the Star Room.
they're coming. Yes, sir, step right in, ladies and gentlemen. Step right in, right this way. Every table of ringside seat gets one. Step right up to the bar, put yourself full of bubbles. I'll give you a lucky people. Come in, come in, come in. I fired him once, too. Smart fellow. You should talk. Hey, Tony, put a cover charge on ye flashlight nut, will you? Mr. Jackson! Glad to see you. I've been looking all over for you. Always caught in a traffic jam. Some crowd, huh? I'll say. Makes me feel like the third man in the telephone booth. Oh, oh. When do I start? You're on right now. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, friendship is a wonderful thing, and here's the proof of it. We have with us tonight a little lady that came down here just to send the Jive Club off to a flying start, singing a brand new song as only she can sing it, Connie Boswell. <laughs> Just for two For a wish Is a dream Come true Under a falling Star Falling star Wrote a melody Upon the air And we knew It was ours To share under a falling star Let clouds conceal you Let trouble music Bring a passing tear When they reveal you That trouble music's gonna disappear Oh, falling star, heartaches vanish in the afterglow. Make a wish and you'll find it so under a falling star.
I'll get a horn like that. You will. Really? such nights in New Orleans. I wonder how long this will last for us. It was worthwhile, even if it lasts only tonight. But this time it's here to stay. What makes you so sure? This. They're not dancing just to forget their troubles. They're getting something they can carry away. They're dancing to music that comes from the heart, music that's American-born. And you'll go on, Johnny, just as great names in music will always go on. Listen.